Hello everyone, whether you're watching in person in China or, or over the web, I hope you're all well uh, wherever you may be. Uh, Delane has asked me to speak today on some of the logistical issues that Australia has experienced uh, post-COVID over the last 18 months. It's certainly been one of the bigger problems we've had to face here and a, and a problem that was completely out of the industry's hands. So going back to the beginning of 2021, we started to experience significant shipping delays out of Australia, like a lot of the world did, of course, where vessels were dropping off, coming to Australia altogether to, to sail on uh, more lucrative routes. Um, we've since seen some of that those vessels be reinstated. So services are traveling a little bit better than what they were six months ago and, and definitely 12 months ago. Um, some of the problems we had when vessels were dropping off in Australia was service providers here. So those companies that, uh, that pack containers or, or, or dump wool were having to store large amounts of wool waiting for vessels to come back online. And that then resulted in, of course, a bottleneck in the industry that flowed back through brokers wool stores right out to the farmers. Now, the biggest negative of that was the restriction in export its cash flow, which of course then translated into the sale room and, and negatively affected the wool market at certain times of the year. Particularly in that February, March period, the, the peak of the season when we're seeing the largest volumes of wool on offer, uh, exporters were certainly uh, not being able to operate to their full capacity due to the shipping problems and not being able to get paid quick enough. So the, the general lead times pre-COVID to ship wool out of Australia was probably in the 13 to 16 day range. We got up as high as 45 to 50 days uh, at the peak of our problems earlier this year. That is the time it takes to buy a bale of wool and have it loaded on a vessel. So we're looking at three times our normal, our normal pay cycle window, which of course was a massive problem for the industry. Although shipping rates also had large increases, particularly to non-China destinations, Europe, for example, and India. Uh, we have not seen a lot of relief on those rates at this stage, which more or less tripled over COVID. Uh, we're seeing some movement now in sea freight rates to China look like they may be reducing slightly, and we're expecting uh, European rates to follow suit at some stage over the next few months with any luck. A lot of the shipping and logistic problems that we did go through seem to have solved themselves during the quieter part of the wool selling season over the last three months. We are back to pre-COVID um, windows to ship wool out of Australia back into the sort of two week range um, or a little bit more. It's certainly welcome news for exporters, uh, whether we can keep that up uh, as we get deeper into the season and quantities start to increase is yet to be seen, but it certainly feels like we might be getting back to some normality. That was generally expected to be late 2023, earlier this year before we would see that. It's very very encouraging that we're seeing early signs uh, of that, that situation correcting itself. We do have a few other challenges in Australia just at the moment. We're currently experiencing um, once in a lifetime rainfalls across the east coast of Australia. This of course is wreaking havoc with new season shearings which is going to delay wool onto the market for, for farmers. It's certainly going to have an adverse effect on uh, returns for those mixed farmers in cropping areas and um, will certainly not help uh, wool production with this heavy rain. The above average seasons we've seen over the last two years have contributed to the wool clip increasing in Australia which is fantastic news. Uh, we certainly hope that um, that will continue this season. It certainly looks like looks like it will. Uh, the wool market's certainly got a few challenges globally at the moment, which which I'm sure everyone online would be would be conscious of. Um, we certainly look look for better times going into 2023 with a few of those issues solving themselves. Um, I wish everyone all the best for the coming year, and, and, and thanks, Delana and the team for giving me the opportunity.